When I was in the fifth grade, I started on a quest. A quest that began with a balloon, a comb, hair, and paper clippings. Like every other Friday before, it was, it was Science Friday. But this one was different. Now, normally, I'd be in the back of classroom playing Pokemon on my Game Boy underneath the desk. But this time, I put it down. You see, my teacher, she had made a bet. She bet that she could get paper clippings to jump by simply bringing a balloon close to them. If she couldn't, instead of Science Fridays, we'd have Free Fridays. And for the last hour of class every Friday, we'd get to do whatever we wanted. Little naive fifth grade me was like, bring it, lady. Looks like I'm going to be playing Pokemon on top of my desk. And then the experiment began. She took the paper clippings, put it all over her desk, took out a balloon, but started rubbing it on her head. I was like, what's going on? It looks like I'm going to win. But I was wrong. After about two minutes, she took the balloon and brought it down to the desk. And I couldn't believe what I saw. The paper clippings actually jumped. It was a static electricity that she generated by rubbing the balloon on her head that attracted the paper clippings. She went on to say that a similar experiment could be done with a comb, a comb and water. By taking a comb and brushing your hair, you can generate the same static electricity to pull water towards it. That blew my mind. And it was at that very moment that I made a promise, a promise to myself to master this thing we call electricity. So fast forward 10 more years. I'm a senior in high school. I was pretty excited. I was like, yes, finally I'm going to graduate. I'm going to master this thing we call electricity. But then I asked myself, what do I really know about electricity? I mean, I know electricity is a flow of charge, also known as current and current times resistance is voltage, but how is it made? I didn't know. So I began digging, and what I found blew my mind. Most of the electricity we generate today comes from fossil fuels, fuels that we scour the earth for, tear it up and dig just to find fuels like natural gas, oil, and coal. And what we do with them I thought it was pretty cool. We take, this, we take this coal, we take this coal, and we burn it. Once it burns, once it burns, it actually boils water. This water turns into steam, and the steam rises out of a boiler, and that boiler turns to turbines. These turbines then power a generator. And it's this generator that rotates magnets around a copper coil that generates alternating current. Now, after a, few, a little bit of manipulation and conditioning, this alternating current is then sent out to be used. I, like I said, I thought this was pretty cool. You know, this, this idea of using steam to turn a turbine to make mechanical ro rotation dates over 2,000 years ago. But then I learned how efficient it is. For every 10 units of coal we burn, that's 10. The energy equivalent of only one reaches our businesses and homes. That's 10%. I couldn't believe it. And it gets worse. 80% of the energy we use today comes from fossil fuels. And in 25 years, it will continue to come from fossil fuels. By the year 2040, we're going to jump, jump from 524 quadrillion British thermal units of energy to 820 quads. That's 524 followed by 15 zeros. 
four, five, six. Yeah, I don't have enough fingers for that. So that means in 25 years, 56% of the energy we're consuming is going to increase, and 80% of it is still going to come from fossil fuels. But it gets worse. With the current consumption rates of our fossil fuels, we only have about 53 year years left of oil, 62 years left of gas, and 118 years left of coal. Now, I know you're all thinking 118 years, that's a pretty long time, right? Yeah. But what happens when we run out of coal? And, or sorry, when we run out of oil and gas? All that energy that would have otherwise been generated from the oil and gas is going to get tacked onto the coal. And what turns what's 118 years turns into 80 years, then turns into 70 years. Now, yes, as technology does improve, we will be able to dig deeper and collect the, the fossil fuels that we otherwise would have been too risky to get. But the problem still remains the same. If you count the start of the Industrial Age in 1760 as the mainstream consumption of fossil fuels and approximate the complete depletion of them by 2160, 400 years, we would have consumed what took 300 million years to make in only 400 years. That's a rate of consumption 750,000 times faster than production. I couldn't believe it. So the big question is, what do we do? Right, that's the big question, it's the golden question. Well, it's a two-pronged attack. The first thing is to be wise on how we actually use our energy. But I'm not here to talk about that. If you want to learn more about that approach, you should watch a TED Talk called How Behavioral Science Can Lower Your Energy Bill by Alex Lasky. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. What I'm here to talk about is switching to renewables. But when I say switching to renewables, I don't mean hopping on the, energy, on the renewable energy bandwagon and throwing solar panels everywhere. I mean, let's face it. One, you don't want your house to look like that. And two, it's just not practical. I'll admit, when I first learned about renewable energy, the first thing that came to mind was solar this, solar that, solar here, solar there. But then I thought, what else can I do? What else is out there? What else can I use? And what I found out was amazing. Not only do we have solar, there's wind and wind turbines. There's geothermal and using the Earth's heat. There's even ocean and using tides, waves, and currents. So whether or not you're a businessman and you're looking to open a new factory or you're a homeowner looking to buy a new house and you want to go, you want to start developing your own broader energy portfolio, ask yourself this, what else can I do? If you're thinking about buying a cabin in the woods on the side of a mountain and you want to go green, don't try and throw solar panels all over your roof you're only going to have three hours of usable sun because the trees will be too tall. What if your cabin had access to a waterfall or a creek? Maybe you could do microhydro. Or let's say you're, you're a businessman or a woman and you have a factory. A factory that uses a lot of hot water in the refinement of metals. Instead of using solar panels to, to power a heater to heat your water, why not do industrial-sized solar water heaters? Solar water heaters that are 70% efficient at converting the sun's energy into heat versus solar panels that can only convert up to 28%. Maybe you're a farmer. And you've got a lot of windy land. Sure, you could erect these huge, tall wind turbines that can really only operate at high speeds, wind speeds, that is, and winds are coming from a specific direction. Or maybe you could use wind turbines a fifth of the height that can use a 360 degree funnel to take winds from all directions and use low wind speeds to generate the same amount of energy as a tall one. So whether or not you are a businessman, businesswoman, or a homeowner, and you want to develop your energy portfolio, you want to diversify it, ask yourself this, what else can I do? 
That question transformed the way that I thought. It opened my mind. It transformed my quest. The quest that I made 10 years ago, the quest to master electricity. Today, that question made me change my promise. Today, I promise to help make our world a better place and protect it by making sure you all make the best energy decision. I'm a senior in college. I still have a lot left to learn. I'm no guru, let's face it. But by sharing that one question with you, now you have the power to make the right decision. So remember, always ask yourself, what else can I do?